All right, let's get started. In the last video, we introduced the idea of polar form of complex numbers. And in this video, what we're going to do is I'm going to basically show a bunch of like properties that uh, involve like doing math with the polar form of complex numbers. Now, this is going to be a real like hodgepodge of a video because essentially I just have four more or less unconnected lessons I want to uh, tell you guys. So we're just going to like plow through them. So let's jump right in and talk about the terminology with complex numbers. So here we have our complex plane, and we can plot out a complex number, z. And we know from the last video we can plot out all these different things to describe this point. Uh, here's y, here's x, here's r, and here's theta. But it's important that we know like the proper terminology and the proper shorthand for like what these variables are. So we say that the real part of our complex number z is equal to x. Our imaginary part of z is equal to y. We say that r, that's equal to the, uh, the absolute value of z. We, this is also known as the magnitude of z or the modulus of z. But this is the shorthand for it right here. And we can say that theta, that's the angle of z, or the phase of z, or occasionally you can see it as the argument of z. ARG for argument. Now, uh, it's important to get like the shorthand out of the way early because you're going to see this over and over again if you're working with complex numbers. But that's more or less all I want to say about that. Uh, moving on to the next topic, I just want to do one brief example. We're going to, in this example, we're going to rewrite one complex number, negative 1 minus i, and we're going to do, rewrite it in polar form. So, first off, let's just draw out our complex plane. Oops. Okay, so the real part, that's just negative 1. The imaginary part, that's also negative 1. So we can plot it out by going left 1 and down 1. And we can say it's this point right here. Now, we can try and figure out what the radius is or what the magnitude is. That's r is equal to the square root of negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared and that's just uh, equal to radical 2. Now here's the important part, trying to figure out what the value of theta is. Now, I mentioned in the last video that one formula for theta that you might see is that theta is equal to the arctangent of y over x, or the imaginary part over the real part. And I also mentioned that this isn't really true all of the time. We're going to see that in this example. But what would happen if we just use this formula right now? We could say that theta is equal to the arctangent or inverse tangent of negative 1 divided by negative 1. That's the same as the arctangent of 1, which is just equal to pi over 4. So if we were to just apply this formula, we would just get that theta is equal to pi over 4. But here's the thing. This angle here is just pi over 4. But our theta is this angle right here. It's pi over 4 plus this angle here, this angle pi. So our actual value of theta is not pi over 4. Our actual value of theta is actually 5 pi over 4. So it's important that when you're actually trying to figure out what the phase of a complex number is, it's really important that you just like graph it out first, just to make sure like the angle you get makes sense. Now, to give me to be completely rigorous, uh, I do have to point out that 
if we, let's say we're at this point right here, this angle is 5 pi over 4, we could add another 2 pi to our phase and basically loop around the entire complex plane and loop all the way back to this angle here and land up at the same point. We could also add 4 pi to our uh, phase and loop around twice and add, end up at the same point. In fact, we can add 2n pi to our phase, where n can be positive, negative, or zero. It has to be an integer, a positive, negative, or er, positive or negative integer. And all these angles, all these thetas, all describe the same point. So we technically say that there are an infinite number of thetas that can describe this point. Uh, we typically say, though, that theta is equal to 5 pi over 4 just by itself. That's what we like to call the principal value of theta. But to be completely rigorous, we have to include this plus 2n pi. This may seem like nitpicking, but it really comes in handy when we're uh, working with roots of complex numbers. So now we have our magnitude, we have our phase, let's write it out in polar form. So we can say that z is equal to radical 2 e to the i 5 pi over 4 plus 2 n pi. Now here's the trick, we can simplify this up because e to the i times 2 n pi that's just equal to 1. You can plug in 2 n pi to sine and uh, cosine and i times sine, and you'll find that this is true. Which means that we can simplify up our polar form by just writing, instead of the whole like theta, we can just write the principal value of theta. So z is equal to radical 2 times e to the i times 5 pi over 4. So that's this number in polar form. Now that we got that up, um, actually, I might just break this video into two. It looks like I'm bordering on time. In the next video, we're going to talk about math involving complex conjugates and multiplying and dividing uh, complex numbers in polar form. So I'll hopefully see you soon.